Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna be going over a really helpful trick that I learned while studying a certain style that I think really cracks the code on how to understand Sonic designs. This can apply to more than just Sonic though, it can go to any character. If you have any favorite video game characters outside of the franchise, this would be a helpful trick to learn how to draw them. But I'm gonna be applying my knowledge of Junio Sonic to all designs of Sonic. So each of these designs is unique in their own way and represents Sonic a little bit differently. But what makes them different? What exactly is changing, particularly in their face, that instantly makes them all a little bit different? It's a term that I've come up with that I'll explain further. It's called facial real estate. Now I know what you're thinking. It's free. And it is, it's totally free. Check out this free hint. So facial real estate is the term I've come up with to describe the amount of space that Sonic's eyes, face, nose, and mouth take up on any shape. Now at a glance, these are all pretty similar. And you may be thinking, well, I don't see any difference at all. But surprisingly, facial real estate on Sonic makes a huge difference. So let's take Jam for example. I see a lot of people trying to draw Jam like this. And you're like, okay, well that's not that bad. What's wrong with it, Jazz? But let's pay attention to a couple of key things. First, the size of the muzzle in each design is very different. This is way thicker than this is. Pay close attention to how far apart the ears are from the eyes, the top of the eyes. In Junio Sonic, it's very, very short. In other Sonics, it's, oh, it's about the same. But notice that in Junio Sonic, it's almost at the top of his head, and in OVA Sonic, it's like almost jutting into half of his skull. It's almost like right here. So this is what I'm talking about facial real estate. Basically, I'm thinking of how is the circle of his head being taken up? What features go where? How are they used? Again, here, the gap is actually a bit larger because the mask doesn't come as high as on Junio, and his ears go up here, near the top of the skull, similar to Junio, but they're a little bit smaller. Now Jam, and this is what I think people miss a lot, Jam has a very large forehead. The gap between his the top of his eyes and his ears is large. It's not just the shape of everything, it's the proportions of things, and particularly getting the proportions of Sonic's face right all it takes is a little bit of examination. In fact, if there's a certain style or any character from any franchise you wanna learn how to do, I highly recommend you bring them into a painting program or print them out and trace over them and find their basic shapes. Don't trace over them like this. This doesn't teach you anything. Trace over them and think, okay, I'm gonna do this curve here. How big is this curve? What typically is the length here, right? Is this like five meters? Is this five inches, right? How long does it take to, the, to, to get to the end of a Tootsie Pop, so to speak, okay? Like we're trying to figure out mysteries here about character design. Let's approach Jam again with this, with this thinking, okay? I'm gonna draw a circle. And if I just wanna mimic this face, I'm already going to make a line where the top of his eyes are. So his eyes are not gonna go past, basically my rule is for Jam, his eyes don't go past halfway of his head. So you wanna, you basically wanna squish all of Sonic's features between this and this. And then his ears go about right here. When an experienced artist draws a 2D shape, it is a representation of a 3D form. So, Whenever Sonic is drawn, we are imagining that his head is occupying this 3D space here. Now let's imagine it goes around, a couple of axes for the sphere. Now, why does this matter? Well, if you like to imagine Sonic's face as a sphere, it helps break up his features a little bit more easily. So we can cut his face basically in half. And now we know the line for his muzzle does not go past his ears. So if you think of your jawline, your jawline ends where your ears begin. And that's how I like to treat Sonic's muzzle. The muzzle does not go past where his ears begin. So if I just start halfway up circle, I can just place his ears on his head like this. And now I know that his eyes are not gonna go past the halfway point on his head. Okay. So his muzzle has to go between here and here. 
Actually, I think it, I made his ears a bit too big. I'm just gonna clean these up just a little bit. They might be a bit, a bit big. And again, I, I'm not going for perfection here, but I am gonna show you how easily you can adjust your accuracy of your design if you're trying to mimic something simply by examining the proportions. And maybe it goes just, just barely past the halfway point on his face. And the distance between his, his muzzle and his eyes, this is another landmark that I look for. And then Jam's face also kind of comes up and just swoops right into his muzzle. I just like to imagine Sonic rolling down. He's got very, very large eyes. See, I already made another mistake because his eyes actually go a little bit farther out as well. They go to the length of the muzzle as well, and I didn't do that. I'm just gonna make that adjustment real quick. I think that's pretty close. At a glance, I think everyone can tell what it is I'm going for. Not perfect, but this is a good start. Guys, thanks for watching. This was just a quick tip, and the full video for the Junio Sonic tutorial will be linked in the description. Have a great day and happy 4th of July. <laughs>